please um, share, share, share this link with your friends. And um, yeah, plan to also attend. It's not going to be a long, a very long session. It's just going to be like 30 minutes. All right. So we would start now. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. And um, from, from uh, wherever you've joined for, I want to say good afternoon. Here in the UK, it's 2.03 p.m. So, and it's afternoon. So I'm sure most of my participants are from Nigeria. I, I want to really appreciate you for, you know, always supporting me, for always joining my sessions. Um, uh, today's session would actually be centered on goal setting. And uh, trust me, you would be greatly enlightened. You will be greatly um, illuminated as a result of joining today's session. So one thing I want to say is that the purpose of this session is to help you understand why some people are achievers and why some people are underachievers in life. The purpose of this session is to help you understand why some are successful and why some are failures. The purpose of this session is to help you understand that no one really has an excuse as to not to make it in life or to not be successful in life. So um, a lot of us have actually heard about the word goal, goals, goals, you know, it's a very popular word. But the question is how many of us truly understand, you know, what truly, because it's wanting for you to know, it's wanting for you to understand, and it's wanting for you to have the wisdom to apply what you know and understand. So the essence of this session is to give you the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom as it pertains to goals. Um, so yeah, I'll be telling us the why, the whys of goal settings. So why do you need to set goals? How do you set goals? When do you set goals? What are, you know, I'll be answering some of your questions. Then at the end of the session, I would give them for, um, for, a couple of, I will give them for questions and answers session. So, all right, so let's start. So the question is, what is goal setting? When we say goal setting, what does it really mean? So goal setting is actually um, a life planning mechanism that makes you win and become successful in life. The truth of the matter is, it doesn't make sense to just live life live life on you know on a random basis some of us that have actually done physics you will know that you have what we call scalar quantity and you have what we call vector quantity scalar quantity does not have direction though it has magnitude but for vector quantity you have direction so i will tell you that sadly sadly about 99 percent of humans are living life on a scalar basis and not on a vector basis. So many people are not living life based on, you know, they're not living life with direction. And we need to understand that when you don't set goals, you can't actually achieve much in life. In fact, you can't even achieve in life. So here I have no goal setting equals no goals getting. So you don't get your goals. You don't achieve your goals when you don't set your goals. Because when you say, when you, say you set goals, it means you're planning. The popular motivational speaker, Tony Robbins, will say, will say goals is actually what, what helps you convert the invisible to the visible. So a lot of us, you know, for some of us here that are spiritual, you go to church, they give you prophetic word. Is that enough? It's not really enough because God wants you to also participate. So this is not a spiritual session. So I will not be talking on, you know, on those aspects of god man synergy so i'll just be dwelling on what we are supposed to do so yeah goal setting is very very important so the question is how many of you have actually set goals for this year you know we've actually you know it's wanting for you to have i'm not saying prayer request i'm not saying prayer list how many of you have actually taken time to carve out or to to, to set goals for the year you know, and by the end of the year, you would say you've not really grown. The truth of the matter is you don't grow when you don't set goals. So when you set goals, you grow. When you set goals, you grow. But when you don't set goals, you don't grow. And just living life based on, I will just grow. I will just grow. It's, that, that, that's not ideal. All right. So the next one is we need to understand why we set goals. So why do we set goals? Why do we set goals? Number one is the right thing to do. 
you know, a life without purpose or vision is a life, is a meaningless life. And a life without goals, you know, is a life that is lived based on experiments. And some of us are living life based on experiments. Some of us, are, and I, I think I used to be that way as well. I was just living life. I didn't really know where I was going. And, but the moment I started, you know, setting my goals, following my goals, achieving my goals, it's, it's, it's made life more meaningful. It made life more purposeful for me. Like I became, I, I became happier, a lot happier. I became a lot joyful. You know, life became more meaningful. So the question is, how many of us are doing this right thing? How many of us are, are, have, have actually set goals? So you need to know that the reason why you need to set goals is because number one, is the right thing to do. You are not, you are not on the head to waste time. Because time goes, time flies. And uh, I understand that the thing about regrets, regrets actually, um, let me put it this way. It is more painful when you grow older or when you become very old and you start, you know, you start having a retrospect of the things you fail to do. You can actually take stock of your life. You can actually design your life by setting goals now. Don't wait till the future. So plan yourself now, set your goals now, and go after those goals so that you can have a meaningful life. It's not just for you to just live life. So it's the right thing to do. Number two, it helps you to stay focused on your dreams. So a lot of us actually fantasize. I remember, you know, when I was a child, myself and my siblings we would actually have some uh, fantasy moments where we, we just say stuff like, I'll have 10 buildings, I'll have five, 10, 15 cars, those, those fantasies. But now that I'm older, <laughs> you know, I no longer fantasize like that. But does it still stop you from having those dreams? No, you need to still think big. You need to have those big dreams. So what are some of the big dreams you could have? You want to have a house abroad. You want to be able to, you want to buy a yacht. You want to be able to fly your spouse or your children to watch, you know, live match. You know, these are, these, are, these are good dreams to have. But if you don't actually set goals, you will not achieve these dreams. And in the end, you will end up regretting. So goal setting help you to stay focused on your dreams. So dreams are more like fantasies. But just that as you mature, they are more, they are more you know, um, measured, measurable dreams you get there are more defined dreams than when you know you, you you were a kid so number three goal setting helps you to become disciplined with the use of your time and resources a lot of us are not disciplined with our time a lot of us are not disciplined with our money a lot of people just i can tell you several people have spent money you know like aimlessly and they end up regretting it i've also been like that because i didn't have i didn't have goal I didn't have goal as to what I wanted to use money to do. But the moment I, I started understanding what goal setting meant, what it mean, what it means to achieve goals, trust me, I my time and resources are well used and managed. For example, I know what I want, I know what I do on a daily basis. So you can't just call me randomly and say, you know, we need to talk. Why should we talk? So we need to fix time. Jigga. We need to schedule time. So, and that's what goal setting helps you to do. So goal setting helps you to become disciplined with your time and resources. And you need to know that your, the unit of life is measured in time. So if you don't manage your time effectively, it's a wasted life. Goal setting helps you to measure growth. So it's not just for you to say I've grown. And now, see, at the end of the session, you will know how to grow effectively and fast. Because this is what is applicable in my life. This is what I do. I've also studied people that you know that, that, that are very that are very successful. This is what they do. Most of, often than not, people don't actually come out to say this is what they do. But I'll tell you, this is this, these are the secrets. Goal setting. So goal setting helps you to measure your growth. Then number five, the absence of goals means you lack vision and purpose. So if you're not setting goals, it means you actually lack vision and purpose. That's what it means. Okay. Moving on to the next one. So we need to understand that we have two major kinds of goals. So some would classify it as three, but I would typically classify it as two. We have what we call the short-term goals, and we have what we call the long-term goals. Short-term goals are goals you want to achieve within the space of 12 calendar months. So for example, some of you would have come up with your goals for 2023. Those are your short-term goals. 
But when you have your goals, you know, span above one year, those become your long-term goals. So goals above one year are long-term goals. Now, is it bad for you to set long-term goals? No. So the, what I will tell you is set your long-term goals, your goals in the next five years, what, to, what you want to achieve in different aspects of your life in the next five years. And I'll be showing those, those aspects in our next uh, slide. So you need to come up with what you want to achieve in your finances. What are your goals in your, in your relationships? What are your goals as it pertains to mental development? What are your goals as it pertains to career in the next five years? So I would even say long-term goals accommodate your dreams and fantasies as well. So for example, you could say you want to have a building. You want to. So what I'll just tell you is feel free, write down those fantasies you have in your heart, those big dreams, write them down. For now, you might not need to allocate time, but once you're done writing them down, you cannot start allocating time. For example, you want to build school, you know, for the orphanage. You can have it as a goal. So it's after you're done with all of these goals that you can now start allocating time to say, okay, based on where I am now, in the next five years, I should be able to achieve this. In the next 10 years, I should be able to achieve this. So you need to know where you're going to in the next five years, at the minimum. Some people have up to 10, goals, 10 years. For me, I don't have up to 10 years for now, but at least five years, very, very important because it helps you to, to, to stay on course. Now, the thing about short-term goals is that Short-term goals helps you to achieve your long-term goals. So in the build-up to achieving your long-term goals, short-term goals help you to achieve your long-term goals. Let, let me give you an example. If your long-term goal is to work with Facebook, is it possible? Yes. Is it achievable? Yes. Have people done it? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. But you need to be realistic. Is it possible for you to get, to start, you know, learning data analytics today and join Facebook in the next one year is very unlikely. It's quite difficult. So it's not too achievable. But that kind of goal can fall under your long-term goal to say, I want to travel abroad and work with Facebook USA. I want to, I want to work with you know, uh, JP Morgan UK. I want to, to work with Google UK. Wherever, it can be a long-term goal. And now you must write these things down. Then you can now start having your short-term goal. So your short-term goal to actualizing that long-term goal is that I want to learn data analytics, analytics and become a data analyst in the next six months. It means you'll be learning Excel and Power BI in the next six months. And you want to be employable in the next six months. So this, this is a short-term goal that actually helps you to achieve your long-term goal. So you can, you can see that short-term goals are important and as well as long-term goals, all right? So moving on to the next one. I've actually talked about the kinds of goals. So we need to just understand the different aspects of life, you know, for which we should have our goals, you know, set. Number one is spiritual. It's important to set spiritual goals. You are a spirit that has a soul and you live in a body. Right, so you need to set spiritual goals. You need to set mental developmental goals. You need to set goals around your emotional well-being. You need to set goals on relationships. You need to set goals on finances. You need to set goals on career and business. You need to set goals on physical, your physical body. You need to set goals on your service, you know, slash ministry. So for example, what I'm doing now is my ministry, is my service. I'm doing it for free, you know, so, so I've actually, I need to have goals along that line. I actually have goals. So you also need to set goals along that line. How do you want to you know, impact others as well? You need to set goals around fun and recreation because it's not just for you to be working, working, working and not you know, having fun. You need to also enjoy yourself, right? So these are different aspects of life you know, for which you can actually set your goals. I'll be sharing this slide afterwards. So in case you want to have a grasp of this different area. So these are different areas. So it's very possible you set goals along spiritual and you've actually you know, left your finances, you've left your career, you've left your physical body, you've left your, you know, you've left fun and recreation. It means that you're not living a holistically successful life. That's what, that's what we, you know, would actually come out of it. So you need to carry out all aspects of your life along. 
Another angle to setting goals is that if you don't, if you can set goals from the angle of the as different aspects of life that, like I shared, you can also set goals based on your different roles in life. So by different roles, I'm using myself as an example on this. Number one, I am an individual. I have siblings. I need to set goals along this area. So I have siblings means I need to set goals on how I need to keep in touch with my siblings. I have a career. I need to set goals along my, um, along my career path. I have a working, worker in church. I need to set goals on that. I have parents. I need to set goals on how I keep in touch with my parents. I have friends. I need to set goals on that. I have mentors. I need to set goals. I have mentees. I need to set goals. So you can set goals based on different aspects of your life. And so that you can also have a complete, uh, you can also have a complete goal setting. You can actually also look at it from different roles in your life as well. So maybe not just aspects of life. So you can look at it based on different. So if you're a father, you need to set goals. If you're a husband, because you're a father, you can be a father, you can be a husband, you know, you can be a, a worker, you can be, you can be a businessman, set goals on this, on these areas. All right. So now, moving on to the next one, which is setting smart goals. You know, I'll tell you, the word smart goals is, you know, actually very, very popular. Smart goal, smart goal. And um, I've, I've been hearing the word smart since I think I was in maybe it's primary school. Yeah, primary school. Or well, I just say, you know, um, secondary school. But yeah, I've been hearing that word smart goal, smart goal. But how many of us truly set smart goals? How many of us truly set smart goals? The truth of the matter is, life is not to be wasted. I can tell you. The regret that comes from not doing it, from not planning one's life, from not designing one's life, is, is too much. It's too much. It's very painful when you when you get to the to the bus stop of your life and you start, you start looking back and start seeing, seeing that you could have planned your life effectively so one way you plan your life effectively one way you design the future because the creator has actually given us that uh, that leeway to be able to design our life you, you make choices so one way you do that is by setting smart goals so don't forget you have short-term goals you have long-term goals and you need to set short-term goals across different aspects of your life or different roles in your life you need to set, set long-term goals across different aspects of your life as well. But these goals must be smart. There are certain times that goals, you know, goals are not, uh, uh, you can't actually put time. There are certain times, maybe when you have fantasies, for example, you can't actually, let's say, you want to, you want to travel to watch Messi. In the interim, you might not be able to, uh, to, uh, to put time, but as time goes on, you'll be able to put time. All right? So, you need to set smart goals, all right? So what do we mean by smart? Smart means S is for specific. So your goal must be specific. It mustn't be vague. Your goal must be measurable. It means you must be able to track your goal. I'll be showing us an example in the next uh, um, two slides. So your goal must be measurable. It means you must be able to track your goal. You must be able to check. Let's say, for example, your goal is to lose, you want to weigh 80 kg. Let's say, for example, you weigh 100 kg now and you want to weigh 80 kg in the next six months. Is that specific? So you, you write something like, I will weigh 80 kg by July 2023, July 31st, 2023. That's a, that's a specific goal because it's not vague. But if you say something like, I want to lose weight, that is not specific because how do you want to? So when you put number, when you, ask, you, know, when you put number to it, you are being specific, then is it measurable? Yes, it's measurable because you can actually measure your weight every month. Or for, for me personally, I measure my weight on a daily basis. So I think I was weighing, I think it's something I had to start giving myself a target. Now I weigh 70 something. Thankfully, the fast, the fasting in church, my church has also helped. So yeah. Your goal must be measurable. Is it achievable? Yes. So it's not like you weigh 100 kg and you say you want to weigh 50 kg. That's not achievable. So you must know 
Well, to some it's achievable, but it's, for me, I don't really think that's achievable. So your goal must be achievable. Your goal must be relevant as well. It must be relevant. So what does it mean for a goal to be relevant? It must be relevant to your vision. It must be relevant to your, to your values. It must be relevant to your long-term objectives. It must be relevant to your purpose. So it's not just for, so why do you, it means you must be able to answer the question why. For example, why do I want to reduce my weight? It's because I want to, you know, I want to you know, look good. I want to live healthy. Okay. So that's why. So you must be able to answer. So, and it helps me to also fulfill or achieve other objectives as well. Because when you're when you just fat or obese, you know, uh, you know, it's, it, it can actually affect your self-confidence. I'm just saying, for example, I'm not saying there's, there's anything bad in that, but I'm just using this as an example. Then your goal must be time-bound. So you can actually set. You can actually set the time for it. Okay, by so, so, so time. All right. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. How do you set and achieve goals? Please. We have just two slides left. And this, these two slides are the most important slides in this session. So please, I want you to stay with me. I want you to pay attention. How do you set and achieve goals? Don't just say you want to grow. Don't just say you want to, if you, if you say something like, I want to build a house, that's not, that's not a goal. Ah, that's not a goal. You must, you must be able to drill down. So number one step in, in setting and achieving a goal is write down your goals. A lot of us actually have our goals in our head. I want to grow spiritually. No, make it plain. Write it down. Make it plain. Write down your goals. Get a pen. Get a notebook. Take time. So it could be when you've eaten you know, your, your, your best food. Play, play good music. Write down these goals. Write down your short term, short term goals along different areas. Write down your long term goals. Where do you want to be? You want to get a PhD? You want to get a you know a master's degree in the next three? Write all of these things down. Write down your goals. So you need to use this smart model. Your goal must be specific. It must be measurable. It must be achievable. It must be relevant. It must be time bound. Why are you writing down? You are writing down because. You need to understand that when we, I think I, in my previous teachings, I've actually done, you know, some, uh, I've actually said some things along this side that your mind can actually be split into two major parts, conscious and subconscious. It is when your goal is actually crystallizing your subconscious, that is when you start achieving results. That is where, when the law of attraction is activated people will start coming. You will just be surprised. That is when people will start coming through just to help you achieve that goal. Even without you, it's something that I can't explain, but that is how the creator has designed it. So why did you write that? You write down your goals because you are trying to ensure that it doesn't just stay in your brain. <clears throat> you, want to, you want to make sure it gets to your heart, which is in the realm of the subconscious. So make sure you write down these goals. Very important. I will tell you that some people even write down, you know, they write down their goals every day just to make sure that it goes into their subconscious. They write this down. They have a notebook for goals. They write it down every day. Why are they doing this? It's just so that they can ensure that it crystallizes in their subconscious. And beyond subconscious, we have what we call superconscious. So that's, that's a faculty in your spirit. So we need to understand that the life is also spiritual as well. By the time you do all of these things, it goes to your, you do, sometimes you sleep and you wake up and you get ideas. It's because your subconscious has been working on those things you've been thinking of or you've written down. So it's important you get in the notebook, write, write down your goals. Number two, know your why for pursuing a goal. So know the reason for, the, the reason you, you, you're actually pursuing a goal. Why do you want to achieve a particular goal? The reason why you need to know your why is that your why is what fuels your journey. Let's say, for example, you just have a, a goal of, I want to get a master's degree. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want to prove your point. You want to show people that you are brilliant. That is not a good reason. So as much as possible, your reason must, must, be, must be pure. So I call it pure motives. Make sure that it, it is not based on your, 
it is not based on self-gratification. Make sure that the reason for doing things is because you want to bless others. That should be the major reason because that is what boosts your self-confidence in the end, not just, you know. And a lot of us actually do things based on we just want to prove a point. So when you live life to prove a point, you would actually not be able to achieve your goals. So you want to, I'm not saying, there'll be certain instances where you want to do it for yourself. You want to look good, you want to do it for yourself. But ultimately, when you look good, you are not even doing it for yourself because when you look good, you're looking good so that you have good self-image, good self-confidence, good self-esteem, and ultimately you're able to inspire others, you're able to bless others. So it must, it must actually go beyond you. That is a good reason. Number three, arrange your goals in order of priority. I'll tell you, my spiritual goals come first for me because I know spiritual is what drives other. So my spiritual comes first. Then I think for this year, I have my career goal as maybe number two, certain things I want to achieve in my career. So you can also arrange your goals in order of priority as well. I'll show you an example now. Arrange your goals in order of priority. So which one comes first? It's not just for you to have. <clears throat> so you can have your short-term goals. Arrange your short-term goals in order of priority. Which one is number one? Rank, rank them. It's very important you rank them, like FIFA ranking, rank rank your long-term goals as well. So the reason for ranking is it helps you to, to know the ones you need to focus on, the ones you need to prioritize, because prioritization is very important so that you're not just dissipating your energy on the goals that are not too important. For example, my physical well-being is, is, is an important goal for me, but it's not as important as my spiritual well-being. It's not even as important as mine my, what is it called, uh, my career goal for this year, for example. So you must be able to prioritize. Now, it's not enough for you to have a goal. You must also have action steps. And this is where a lot of us just miss it. Some of us say, I want to become a data analyst. That's a goal. I want to become a data scientist. That's a long-term goal because it takes a while. I want to become a data analyst. That's a short-term goal that helps you achieve the long-term goal. But is it enough? No, you need to have action steps. What are the things you need to do? So for example, I write down all the things I need to do to be able to achieve that goal, to be able to achieve that, um, a, a, a certain goal. And in the next, in the next slide, you'll be seeing a case study. Number five, set a deadline for each goal's action steps. Because when you don't set you know, a deadline, your subconscious also, also freestyles as well. And you don't want to leave your subconscious to freestyle. Take note, anything that dwells in your conscious mind is not going to help you much. Living life in the, on, the, on, the, on the conscious mind basis, and that's where a lot of us, because conscious mind is very closer to the brain. Subconscious is the heart. You know, subconscious and your spirit mind, the heart. And that's where, that's, that's where the law of attraction is really generated. You just start seeing people that need to bless you. You know, so make sure you detail action plans, set a deadline. For example, you want to marry in the next, you could set a goal. I want to marry in the next one year. It's a good goal, right? Set action steps. So it's not, it's not that you you just be indoor, you don't go out, you don't mingle with people, and you want to marry. It won't happen. Even if God has promised you, it will never happen. Because you must set goal, you must take actions for so you must. Also partner with whatever God has told you as well. <laughs> so yeah, set action steps. So you might want to go out, you know, uh, you know, go out more this year on social events, mingle more with people, read books on how to be friendly. If you're not friendly and you want to marry, it will never happen. So that's just an example. Number six, pursue your goals by taking action. So if you use, you can write down your goals, you can arrange them, you can have action step, but if you don't pursue them, it is rubbish. So you must pursue your goals. You take action because it's wanting for you to have a desire. It's wanting for you to have your desires back with action. When you have your desire back with action, we call it decision. So that's, you've actually said, oh, I want to do this. So pursue your goals by taking action. And how do you do this? You know, get people that you can, you can be accountable to, people that you report to, I think a couple of people have been meeting me who decide their goals, you know, and they have like a weekly calls you know, just to check. But for you, it's maybe monthly. Get somebody that you can trust. Do you understand? 
And the reason is because you don't want to waste time. You don't want to waste time. A lot of us have wasted time. I have also wasted time. But until I started learning all of these things, and trust me, I've grown fast. I'm a lot happier. My life is more purposeful. And that can also be the case as well. Number seven, do something every day that moves you towards your, your, your goal, your major goal. So, for example, if you want to, um, if you want to, you know, let me use an example of, I have, a, I have a case study that I will share with us, but let me just wait for that case study. So develop good habits. That's one thing I would say. So do something every day that helps you to achieve your major goal. Personally, I pray, I pray every day. I meditate every day. I read the scriptures every day. You know, I, I read for at least one hour every day. So this month, for example, I've been able to read six, six books. And the reason why I say this is because I, I wasn't a reader, but all of a sudden I struggled. I struggled because I know 2020, I think I read maybe like 20 books, you know, it's, in, it's increased like that. Then last year, 69. And this year, I'm planning on doing at least 50 as well. So it's very possible, but it's a habit. You need to keep it. So for me, I read one hour every day, at the minimum 30 minutes every day. So I already have all of those things on my, on my software. Alexa, that's my, my good tool, also reminds me on, on the daily habits I need to cultivate or things I need to do on a daily basis. Number eight, you need to review and track your progress on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. You need to review and track. Now, let me tell you, some of these things sound ambiguous. Some of these things sound like it's not possible, but they're actually very possible. For example, I have an application on my phone where I have all the things I need to do on a daily basis. And for some, for some activities, I've actually repeated them. For example, meditation is repeated till infinity. So trust me, I struggled at the first instance. I struggled. I really struggled when I was trying to cultivate this. I, I struggled. But with this app, you know, I would. So what I do at the end of the day is before I sleep, I just pick up my phone and I just go through the list. I just click, oh, done, not done, 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 not done. So all the ones that are not done, my subconscious will tell me later on that I need to work on them because I'm seeing them. I'm not, I've not done them. So by the time you tick, that's, that's a review. So I review every day, personally. So you can also get an application like that. There are a couple of applications that can help you do that. On a weekly basis, you can also review like your major goals because daily can just be, but your major goals, like top three, review them on a weekly basis. Your you know monthly on a monthly basis as well review them you know, review review your goals. Number nine, you need to visualize your goals every day. For me, I have a sticky note where I have my goals written. So even when I'm working, I'm seeing the sticky notes. I my major goals are there. Now maybe not the action steps, but I have my major goals where I see my goals. Okay, I need to do this. I need to achieve this. So seeing them every day. You know, it helps me to stay on, on course. It helps, it helps me to stay focused. It's, it's, it, tells, it, it talks to my subconscious because you need to understand that whatever you learned today was is as a result of what went into your subconscious. You are able to speak Yoruba, for example, today because it went into your subconscious. You are able to speak to, to read because you actually see these things. You know, so see these things. Visualize your goals. So for your dreams, you might need to print, you know, that car. Print out that car, print out that your dream house, post them, just keep seeing them. Don't worry as to how it's going to life. Just keep seeing them. All of a sudden, they will start influencing your actions. Number 10, you need to be flexible. Why have I included flexibility here? Because you could say, for example, you want to marry in the next one year. You are not really in control of that. Let's say, for example, you're a lady. You get, you're not really in control. But yeah, you can actually set it as a goal. Read books, go out more, mingle more, you know, get wisdom as it pertains to marriage. That is good. But you need to be flexible. It's not like at the end of one year, if it doesn't happen, you say you failed. No, changes happen. Certain things are not in your control. And it's applicable to everyone. You could have a business. Look at what is happening across the globe now. People have goals. But yeah, changes happen. Recession happens that frustrates their goals, right? So be flexible. Don't beat yourself up. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Don't wait till you even achieve that goal. So for all those your daily habits, 
let them drive you, let them make you happy. Enjoy the process. Don't, in fact, for me, I try, I, I, I try not to look at the goal. I just look, I just enjoy the process. That's it. So be flexible. Enjoy the process. All right. So a good case study before we actually call it a wrap. And um, if you have questions, please drop your questions on the chat box. I'll be picking them up and answering your questions. So in this case study, we have a career goal. And the career goal is, I will, so this is how you write it. You write something, you, you make it positive and you make it, you know, you, you, you let it um, be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So now let's, let's look at this career goal. I will become an employable data analyst by 31st July, 2023. Wow. Is it specific? Yes, because it's not vague. An employable data analyst by a certain is specific, no doubt. Is it measurable? Yes, I can track my progress on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, it's measurable. Is it achievable? People have done it. People have become data analysts in three months. So why can't I do it in six months? So it's achievable. Is it relevant? Yes, because the ultimate goal is, I want to be able to work with Facebook as a data scientist. I want to pursue a PhD degree, a PhD. So is it relevant to my long-term objective, my values and you know my vision? Yes. So it meets her. It, it meets her. Is it time bound? Yes. Because if it's not time bound, then it's not smart. So this goal, as simple as it's a simple goal and it, it meets the smart criteria. Now, after you've done this, you can have action plan. For, for me, for example, I actually do this on Excel, then print out. You could get a notebook as well. Action, what are the, what do you want to do to be able to achieve this now? Action plan, number one, I will research online on what it takes to become a data analyst. As I will read, I will, I will need to do you know, some reading on that. And in doing that, I need to set a time, a time for that. Okay, let's say I'll do that next week, right? So you need to put a time. Number two, I need to reach out to a mentor and learn about relevant skill sets and timeline. So a mentor would be able to let me know, okay, if you if you actually you know learn this every day, you should be able to meet your six months target. So get a mentor. Mentorship see it helps you to restore lost time. Mentorship saves you time. I can tell you, I apply the principle of mentorship in every area of my life. And what is men get books that's mentorship. Talk to people that's mentorship. Don't be too proud to ask questions. No, you will struggle that way. For me, for example, that is my top secret, mentorship. So spiritual book, for example, I, I talk to my pastor. You know, I have books I read as well. I enroll in certain courses. Um, career, I look at, okay, who is doing well in this particular area? I ask questions and get a mentor. It will save you a lot of time. Are you looking for a scholarship? You want to get a scholarship? Don't just do it on your own. Get somebody that has done it. It will save you a lot of time. Number three, you buy, I, I'll buy courses on Udemy on Microsoft Excel and Power BI. That's an action plan. I'll put the, the time to, 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 to do that there. Number four, I will learn and practice Microsoft Excel for one hour every day from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. It's very specific for three months. And after doing that for Microsoft Excel, I'll do that for Power BI. That is an action plan. I will have weekly mentorship session with Mr. X, who is in the field. That's an action plan. I'll subscribe to data analytics related channels on my social media accounts. So rather than just you know carry Facebook and Instagram and start you know watching, subscribe to all of this. Because when even when you don't really you know take time to the fact that they pop up on your on your walls remind you of your goals subconsciously. By the time you are sleeping, your subconscious mind is telling you, oh guy, you've not done well today. You've not done well. When you wake up, you are angry. All right. Number seven, I'll work on a variety of projects on a weekly basis. Number eight, I will start job applications after three months of practice. Tell me how you will not get that job. I have a friend that has applied this in a similar steps. The guy is working with JP Morgan now as a software engineer. This was a guy that never knew, he didn't know jack in computing. Like nothing in computing. Not just one friend, I have a series of friends, series of people that are doing fine just by applying all of this. You know, 
all of these detailed actions. So do you have that spiritual goal? Set action plan. Don't just say you want to know God. It is vague. <laughs> you need to set action plans. Okay, I want to know God on certain topics. Grace. These are the people I need to hear every day. This is how long you know I need to commune with the Holy Spirit every day. So these are just examples. Do you get your relationships? Do you get set goals? Your career. Don't just say you want promotion. What are you going to do? I need to relate more with my boss because it's not, it's not, it's not bad relating with your boss. You know, I need to build relationship with X, Y, Z people. I need to be more effective. I need to do, so write down the action plans. And now you see what I do is there are certain action plans that are going to be arbitrary, like they need to be repeated for a while. So what I do is I incorporate them into my software or I tell Alexa, please remind me to do this every day. So there are certain times I miss, I miss them, but Alexa keeps reminding me. So you struggle. You don't, 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 don't get me wrong. You struggle in the first instance, but after a while, your subconscious will click. So get that application, incorporate them into the application, incorporate them into, into um, tools like Alexa or your Siri to remind you. Before you know it, you'll be flying. See, growth, growth only comes with certain goals. Because when you set goals, you will take actions. And these things, I don't know how to explain it, but they work based on the law of attraction. And there's a law we call the law of compounding effects. These ambitious things you do, you'll just be surprised at how much you've grown. Some of us actually chase the very big technical stuff. For example, if you want to become a data scientist, don't be so crazy about Python. Learn the basics first. Be grounded in the basics. When you are grounded in the basics, you will learn the very similar technical stuff fast. That's how to that's how to grow. So don't be so bamboozled about oh I want to learn you know the very technical stuff. You won't go that way. Focus on the basics. Focus on the ambitious stuff, and trust me, your growth will be effective, efficient, and you will applaud yourself. So that's it. that's it about goal setting. The essence of this session is not just for you to join. You need to, you need to take. See, I will tell you the reason the reason why the white people are doing better than the blacks because I've been here for a couple of, is because of this. This things we call simple. <laughs> they made it arbitrary, so the that's what helps them to generate results. But for us, ah, these are simple things, and we don't do them. No, you will struggle, and later on, you start regretting. So be accountable. Get somebody to 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 track you. So that's it really. So if you have questions, please you can drop on the chat box, and I will just quickly respond. All right. So um, this session is amazing. Yeah, so that's fine. Please can you help us with the app also? Okay. So for the app, for the application to use, just um, I use Tick Tick personally, but there are a lot of to do apps online that are free. Just Google to do apps online and you'll see a lot of them. See, guys, if you want to be an effective father, you can set goals. There are days that you'll just be with your children. There are days you will be with your wife as a good husband. Set them as goals. Don't just live life of, I will be a good husband. No, it is a goal. So, the reason why you're taking actions is you're putting them in your action steps. You say, okay, I'll talk to my wife every, you know, every day, or you know, we'll do this once in a week. These are things you do. You must be intentional. And by you will just live a seemingly effortless, effective, successful life. So, guys, yeah. So the topic is hard, and that case is what I desire to in this year. The mentorship will be up there. Yeah. So I'm always available to mentor. At least for the time being, these things are free. <laughs> so you're getting this knowledge free. Please set those goals now. You will not regret it. You, you see, you like I said, you struggle in the first instance, but please do them. Don't see. If I let me say this, practice long-term thinking. Think ahead. So in five years, okay, when would I be? Will I be struggling? Like so, rather than being, you know, be, being anxious, being worried being scared about the future, make decision now. You can change the future. You can change it. I'm telling you the truth. You can change it. I've seen people, countless people have changed their lives. Do you know? I've done it. I'm still doing it because I'm still going. I have friends that have done it. 
So somebody say, how does one stay consistent in the course of executing the lay down plan? So it's simple. How do you stay consistent? You need to be disciplined. You need to stay committed. You need to be consistent. So I would say discipline is what helps you to be consistent. When you are disciplined, when you understand where, see, when you understand the repercussion of not doing the right things, because some of us don't understand, we wait for the future. We want to experience the hardship first before we understand. But you can understand now by practicing meditation and long-term thinking. Think into the future to say, if you are not consistent, what will be the impact on life? A lot of people are not able to think into the future to know the implication of their current decision. So when you sometimes just sit down and meditate. So if I'm not doing things consistent, where will I be? So if I'm struggling like this, it means I'll struggle more. <laughs> so when you will struggle more, you will want to be consistent. So practice long-term thinking to know the implication of your present decisions. That's what helps you to also stay consistent. And you, you ensure that you are disciplined. You ensure that you are accountable to somebody as well. So sometimes you might need to be, be humble enough to tell somebody you're struggling. You're struggling with meditation, you're struggling with doing it. Part. Be humble, the person will help you. Get, get somebody that can also access to. So those are some of the things. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody had any further questions. But in the absence of further questions, I would say please let's 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 leave, you know. Let's make 2023 a very excellent year. And I have a new year gift for everybody that has joined. So everybody that has joined this session will be getting 1,000 Naira a time, which is there. So I'll be sending to everybody at the end, you know, in the course of the week. So um, yeah, so I expect that as well. So please guys, you can make your life very effective. These guys that have done great or achievers on, you know, the great guys, these are the things they've done, the simple things. Oh, I'm seeing my minister tell, oh, and those in the UK, I'm so sorry, ma. <laughs> Thanks, minister, for joining. All right, so thank you very much for joining this session. All right, so um, see you again. Bye.